I think it depends, Steve, on what you consider to be progress, because there's been a lot of talk about whether or not there's going to be an end of the Korean War declared at this summit. Um, if you uh, or just hope to have some uh, people talking about that, then that's something that could be achieved. However, if you uh, want to actually make headway on an actual end of the Korean War, then uh, from a technical standpoint, you would need China there, because China was one of the original signatories of the armistice uh, several, several decades ago. And so because of that, China would have to be in the room if uh, there was going to be um, an actual peace treaty that is to be signed. And that, I think, think underscores just how important uh, China is in this whole process. Uh, they won't be at the summit tomorrow. However, their presence is going to be largely felt. We already know that uh, based on the fact that, uh, just to, from the symbolic standpoint, the fact that uh, Kim Jong-un had arrived in Singapore on an Air China plane. Uh, there was also reports unconfirmed that he had a military escort um, within Chinese airspace to get him to Singapore. And that is just uh, uh, more evidence of how indispensable China is to all things North Korea. Uh, China is the economic lifeline. China has been the diplomatic ally since the split of the Korean Peninsula. And uh, the president, Xi Jinping, has plenty of reasons why he would want this summit to go well. Uh, he, uh, from an official standpoint, the position of China has been that they want dialogue and denuclearization. Uh, they say that they want this all to happen uh, because they want peace for the region. And so, uh, it, when it comes to the Chinese perspective, they have so many issues on the table when it comes to the United States. They have trade, they have Taiwan, they have South China Sea, they have Hong Kong, they have lots of stuff going on, uh, historically human rights as well. So to clear North Korea as a potential sticking point would be uh, to the benefit of the Chinese. Uh, that said, uh, there are likely many in China especially in the halls of power, who are feeling a bit uncomfortable with the way uh, this has progressed. And that's because the U.S. in the past has uh, pursued a different path, a different framework called the Six-Party Talks, where China was uh, playing a broker role in, in, in those discussions. And this time now, China is a bit on the sideline. And because of that, uh, there probably are people uh, within the official um, uh, uh, halls of power who are uncomfortable with that. Um, Steve, you would also mentioned in the past hour about some of the reports that we've heard that the Chinese could also be concerned about North Korea negotiating its own deal with the United States and countering its dependence on China. That's something that potentially could happen, but even President Trump himself has, um, in his discussions with a senior North Korean official uh, who uh, met him at the White House, had uh, suggested that China and South Korea should be left to handle their own neighborhood. So uh, because of that, uh, that also, uh, you know, uh, leads you to think that uh, the, the United States wouldn't necessarily be um, so interested in cutting China out completely in the process. Eunice, I just wonder, the, uh, the much talked about 28,000 US troops that are based in South Korea, um, is that on the table, do you think, at all as a negotiating point at this stage? Because clearly Beijing would like to see those troops leave. The White House has said that that is not on the table at this point. Uh, but there are a lot of uh, theories out there uh, that one of the issues that might have been discussed when President Xi Jinping had met with uh, the North Korean leader Kim Jong Un uh, just a couple of several weeks ago was uh, a policy coordination on this point. Again, this is all speculation, but there is a theory, a school of thought that um, that both countries would want to see those 28,500 American troops uh, leave the region, that the Chinese, as you had noted, uh, wouldn't want to have the, the U.S. presence, military presence there, uh, wants it to be reduced. And the North Koreans, for a very long time, have complained about the military exercises between the U.S. and South Korea, uh, saying that that is a threat. So um, there could be uh, some hope on the part of the Chinese, as well as uh, the North Koreans, 
that uh, this uh, that that President Trump, unlike any other president, American president in the past, uh, could consider uh, taking the troops out of the region. So we'll have to see whether or not that actually goes on the table. He's as you've as we've seen over the weekend, quite an unpredictable person, and uh, and so we will see if that actually uh, gets on the table and whether or not the American government and the Trump administration follows through with it. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.